Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. You might know him from Million Dollar List in New York, mm -hmm. or even his new show, Sell It Like Sirhan. Ryan Sirhan. What's up? Welcome. Thanks yeah. for having me. Got a really nice suit on. Yeah. I can smell a mother effort with money. <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> what, what does it smell like? See, I can tell. You got some bread on him. You got some bread on Not him. Not on him, but what you do know. I smell like? My favorite yeah. realtor is part of your Brooklyn team. Yeah. Sarah Golan. She actually sold me my house. No way, really? In Brooklyn, yes. Oh, wow. So she's one of my favorite people. Oh, so. We have to take a photo after and let her know. I love that. It's interesting because million dollar listing, it sounds like a lot, but then we see some of these properties in New York and yeah. a million dollars, you can't even really buy much. Yeah. No, I think when the show first started in <laughs> LA, like 15 years ago or so, a million dollars was a, a lot of money for mm -hmm. a house. Mm -hmm. uh, and in New York, it just doesn't get you that much anymore. Well, so how why did not change the name of the, the show? To like billion dollar listing? Yeah, yeah. 10 million dollar listing. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, don't, I, don't think, I think people would feel so like I would just be too like too weird. I think people would feel so like out of their element. I don't know so if people broke would watch it. If it was that much. Yeah, I think million dollar listing. People are like, oh, okay, cool. They probably know a house down the block that's a million dollars. But if we right. did like fifty million dollar listing, I don't know if people would watch it. They'd I be like, like yeah. screw you. Yeah. I don't want to watch that show. It'd be like lifestyle of the rich and famous. Almost. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah Fifty Cent was on million dollar <laughs> listing, and he yeah. just sold his house. Yeah, finally. Right for what was it? But he sold million? it to like himself because no one would buy it, and I think he basically donated it to a charity. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. I was trying to figure that out because they were saying he kept slashing the price, yeah. slashing the price, and then three million. I was like, that doesn't sound like much for that house. The house was just way too big. It was like the biggest house ever. You had to like get a tour guide to go through it. Mm -hmm. I think he said he bought it like right when his career started, and he had all this money, and he just wanted this kick-ass, insane house, and then no one else wanted no it. No one wanted it. Yeah, did, no one wanted it. How does that work though? What's the benefits of you buying back your own house? And I think he, he, I think he gave it to his charity to use for like kids and stuff like that. Oh, so you write it yeah. off on taxes? Yeah, or probably. Something? Okay. Do you feel like you could have negotiated and sold that house? Right? Probably, probably. But honestly, he did. He did something good with it. Right. You know, like you're going to give it to someone who's going to tear it down and just build something even crazier, or you mm -hmm. kind of like give it to people who are actually going to use it and can actually need the space. I think it's probably pretty cool. Now, and most people don't do that. You know what he said was, I think everybody that tried to buy it wanted to break it down. Yeah. And do a bunch of houses, but the town wouldn't let him. Yeah. So yeah, he yeah. said he was pretty stuck. Yeah. Now, how did you get into real estate? Uh, I was broke, man. I, I moved to New York City to act in 2006 when mm -hmm. I graduated college. And I can I see had, that. Yeah, and I had, I had like a little bit of money saved up from summer jobs working on the ranch in Colorado mm -hmm. um, where I just saved up money because I, I was a contractor's laborer. And I wanted to act. I wanted to do theater. And I thought it was going to be easy, and it was not easy. <laughs> Couldn't make any money. I hand modeled for a little while. Let I held phones. I held phones for AT&T. Okay. <laughs> um, I was on like billboards holding phones, literally, and like little Nespresso capsules and like water dripping down my knuckles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, was that profitable? It was 150 bucks an hour, man. That was the most money I ever made. Whoa, okay. It, was, it was awesome. Yeah. What's the requirements for a hand model? You know, smooth, silky skin. Can't they just Photoshop that in? Anyway? You would think so. That's what I would say. They would like fly me to Miami to hold cell phones. <laughs> wow. I swear, this is like, they're real. This is my real life. Um, and I was like, there's nobody with hands in, in Miami. He's like, no, man, Ryan, you give the best hand jobs. I'm like, okay. Hey, hey, um, hey, right. Sorry. Right, right. You do what you got to do to get your show. Exactly, right? right? And then, uh, but hand modeling doesn't doesn't pay the bills forever, and I didn't know what else to do, and I ran out of money, and a friend of mine was like, listen, it's beginning of 2008, real estate's the greatest thing in the world, post ads on Craigslist, rent an apartment or two a month. You know, if you rent an apartment for $4,000 a month, your split when you're a new agent is 50-50, so take in $2,000, pay your rent, pay your bills, and then go do whatever you want with the rest of your day. And I was like, real estate brokers are the worst. I hate real estate brokers. I don't ever want to work in real estate. But I, I, it was either that or go home or mm -hmm. become a bartender or wait tables or do temp work. Or get and then, hand jobs. Exactly. You know? <laughs> and so my and my first day, I got my license, and my first day was the day Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy in 2008, September 15th. Mm -hmm. um, and I just started from there. And I got addicted to, like, meeting people on the street. Like, I could meet someone in Starbucks and maybe make money with them. Mm -hmm. I couldn't like meet someone in Starbucks and maybe get cast in a play or right. do some sort of job. House yeah, I could meet like I would literally my first clients were meeting pregnant women in Starbucks and on the street and telling them that they needed more space. Like you probably need more space. You're about to have a baby. And people would laugh and some people would say get out of my face, but a few of them at the early part of my career were like Yes, we actually do. We were looking at two bedrooms or three bedrooms with my husband in Brooklyn or wow. Astoria. Do you have anything? And I'd be like, oh, shit, oh no. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do have something. Mm -hmm. And then I'd show them things randomly. And some of those were my first clients. And I wow. became addicted with the idea that I could literally meet people on the street in New York City and build a career that way. And that's what I did. And now here I am 10 years later. How hard was it to give up on your dream? Because a lot of people, when they want to get in the 
Hollywood. Yeah. Like, this, oh, this is my dream. And yeah, yeah, yeah. How hard was it to let that go to go do real And interestingly, you are yeah. in Hollywood still. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you, um, are. you know, I, for me, it was always like I chose success first, mm-hmm. right? And that's really, really important to me. Like, I, I wanted to be successful. I wanted to live a good life. I think that life is super short. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to just be good at what I was doing. And if acting wasn't it, I wasn't going to be one of those people who are like, woe is me and complain and say, oh, it didn't work out for me. And then be broke when I'm 50 or move back home with my parents. Right. So it didn't work out those first two years. I ran out of money and I said, okay, maybe this isn't in the cards for me, mm-hmm. but I know how to work and I'm a hard worker. And let me see what else happens. And then by putting acting to the side and getting into real estate, then as fate would have it, you know, a year later, literally, there's a casting notice for Million Dollar Listing New York uh, for Bravo because they were going to spin off the LA show. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I've been on camera before. Let me go there. And they were looking for the best realtors under 30 in New York City who sold the most. And I was doing like rental deals in Koreatown at mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like, so why should you be on the show? And I was like, because I'm just the best, baby. And they were like, wow, this guy's a total dick. We should totally cast him. And then I quickly had to become that guy. And that was, that's oh, so how when I got first on the started, show. You weren't selling as much as you were selling. No, man. I was, I was 20, uh, yeah, well, how old was I? I was 24. Yeah, I was mm-hmm. 24 years old. I was renting apartments in Koreatown. I was doing sales in Long Island City, you know, taking the seven train every day, meeting, literally meeting people on Craigslist and then meeting them on the corner and showing them apartments and hoping to God they would pick one. That's how I started. That's how I got a million dollar listing. And then I just, didn't take a day off for three years. Bravo didn't do any background checking. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think they kind of did, but they didn't like call up any sellers. You know, it was they probably asked me... more about your personality too. Yeah. Like they liked the fact that he was a wow. dick in his interview, and they kinda probably crazy. liked your look too. They yeah. liked your hands. Yeah, I get my hands. They did definitely like my hands. <laughs> you know, I was very much about kind of like just I, I knew how to give people what they wanted to hear. Like that's the one thing I learned with acting. It's like the ability to improvise. And not just walking into a situation. And this is like a good tip for anyone going into any interview. Like, don't walk into a situation with an ego or a preconceived notion of of who you are. Like, you go in there if you want something, and you give them who they want you to be. That's, mm-hmm. You call those bullshitters, though. Yeah, but it, but it works, right? <laughs> get and your foot in the door. Yeah, it's not getting your foot yeah. in the door. But I'm not saying lie. I'm not saying, like, go and be somebody that you're not. I'm just saying I didn't walk in there and say, actually, I don't really do real estate. I just started. My true passion is hand modeling and acting, and I rent apartments <laughs> in Korea town, right? You know, I didn't say that. And I didn't say, hey, I'm the biggest billion dollar broker in the world because that's not true either. Right. I walked in there and I said, no, I'm the best. I'm the best real estate agent in the world. You mm-hmm. have to sell it. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. got to sell it. You got to sell it. Now, how hard is it for agents now? Because agents, you know, people watch Million Dollar Listen and, and it seems, looking on TV, it seems easy. Yeah. But how hard yeah. is it for real- realtors now and people that's trying to get into the business? Dude, it's it's Seems super like everybody's hard. an agent. Really? Yeah, man. There's, there's, I think in New York City, I think in total, there's something like 80,000 real estate agents now. Wow. And just about 11,000 homes will sell this year, somewhere between 11 and 12,000. So most real estate agents don't make money. I think the turnover for people that get into the business and then people who quit in the first year is like 82%. Wow. And some people think you can do it part-time. It's really yeah. hard to do real estate part-time. I tried to do it part-time. Yeah, I tried to. Because you have to show so many, like on average, how many times do you have to show somebody houses until they actually finally buy something? You're showing them between 10 and 20 homes over the course of a couple months. So, and it's not just that, right? It's not, that's, that's like, that's a client who will only work with you. That's like mm-hmm. your grandma, mm-hmm. right? She's not going to screw you. She's not going to go to somebody else. The reason you have to work every single day is because most clients are on the internet all day. Right. They're looking at listings. They're talking to other brokers. Random kids are coming up to them in Starbucks <laughs> telling them they need more space. <laughs> right, and you're like, right, okay, right. I'll work with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got to be very, very relentless and you got to hustle all day, every day and just consistently follow up. But that's, that's what I like about sales, man. Like that's what I fell in love with about the business is mm-hmm. that you don't need higher education, you don't need a leg up, right? Mm-hmm. All that stuff can help, but you can literally show up in New York City or any city, pay a couple hundred bucks, get your real estate license and like hit the streets and you can make money, be successful, increase your lifestyle, get a better apartment. Like me, move out of a 200 square foot space in Koreatown where I was sharing a bathroom with 17 freaking people. Wow. Um hmm. And that was it's that like was my hostel. incentive. Like my yeah. back was up against a wall, and it was either go home to literally. Colorado. Yeah, literally. Mm-hmm. You know, it was like go home to Colorado and and paint fence for the rest of my life, mm-hmm. um, which is fine for some people, or figure it out and make it work in New York City. 
And it was kind of do or die. It sounds super dramatic, but it was, for me, it was at the time. It's very competitive in New York. Now, let me ask you this. How can you tell when a realtor is BSing you? Because when I was looking for a home in Brooklyn, yeah. which is very competitive, they would tell you, well, we have a whole bunch of different offers. We have three other offers on the yeah, table. Yeah, if yeah. you want to get this house, you have to put in this offer now, and it has to be at this amount, abo- this yeah. amount above the asking price. How do you know when it's time to call their bluff or not? Yeah. It, it's just poker, right? It's It's knowing kind of who wants it more. And you have to remember... The person in the relationship who has all the power is the one who cares the least, right? Remember that, whether it's sales or whether it's Mm -hmm. dating, you know, the one who cares the least is the one who's going to hold all that power. So if you like the apartment you're looking at or the home, but you don't love it, then you're the one who's got all the power because that broker wants that deal more than you do, right? Right. That owner wants that deal more than you do, whether they're renting it to you or you're trying to buy it from them. Um, And you want to use a buyer's broker. Like, that's the best part about New York compared to a lot of other places. Like, that person has a fiduciary responsibility to you, and they're going to want to do right by you, and they're going to be able to call the BS out from, you know, the other brokers on the deal. When it it comes to that dating thing that you said people (laughs) care the least, you sound like you got some experience in that department, sir. Like, you've you've played uh, hard to get on a a, a few Uh, young women? No. My wife's doing doing, My wife played hard to get with me. She was so tough. She had all the power. Yeah, she had all the power. (laughs) Um, But I've learned, like, the hard way. Too, And I also, I think like the two years that I spent in New York City trying to act, that was really, really, really hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you get rejected to your face all day long. Mm -hmm. Like I would wait in line to see an audition in Times Square for eight hours. And then I go in there and they'd be like, no, you're too tall. Your hair is too gray. How old are you? And they wouldn't even let me talk. They wouldn't let me do anything. Like no one in real estate has never said, I don't want to take that apartment because your hair is too gray or too tall. (laughs) Right. Right. Like I don't get rejected to my face anymore. Or if I do, they just don't tell me. Well, so flip, so the, well flip what you said. You, now, how do you know when people come in and they actually can afford the place or they're not just BSing and looking for it's hard. interior designs? Yeah, you know, Because yeah. I know a lot of people must look at apartments just, just to get ideas for their house. Yeah, especially in New York, man. Or What we get a lot is we get people who do that, but we also get people who like show up with their girl and they just they want to look them. cool. So they'll come <laughs> through, especially on the big listings. Like right. If we have a $20 million listing, we'll get a guy who will reach out and be like, I'm not Googleable, but I can close cash in one day. Can I come through tomorrow? And sometimes you don't know. Like some of my biggest clients have been people that you literally would think like live on the street who have no money, but they just don't care. Right. They just do not care, and they have more money than anyone. So should Why you would never you bring go... your girl to look at a house you can't afford? Because you don't her. tell her you can't afford. You, you met her the night her. before, right. man. You're trying to impress her, and you're like, I was, I was thinking about buying this, and then you get in your Uber, right? But you do the black car Uber, so you look cool, mm-hmm. and then it's just a waste of my <laughs> what time. What if she really likes the house though? Like, she's, like, <laughs> and she's like, I want this. They're not married. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're I guess not married. You gotta yeah, make I guess, an I guess it's not gonna work out. He's gonna be like, I don't really like. You know what I don't like about this one? I don't like the street that it's on, and they'll just make something up. Now, is it always? a good idea to go in there and if you love a place act like you don't love it because you said the person who cares the least has the most power yeah I mean listen you listen in sales everybody has their poker face on Mm -hmm. so it's up to you if you really love it you can be open about it Mm -hmm. and try to get a deal done that way and just say you can move quickly or you just walk through like it and then talk about feedback afterwards it's going to help your ability to negotiate that much more because if they know you love it and they see blood in your eyes then they're going to know that your low ball afterwards isn't, isn't going to be real um, you know, unless you really just can't afford it. Like for me, when I negotiate with people, there's there's two ways you negotiate, right? You negotiate with their wallet or you negotiate with their feelings. And it's hard to negotiate with someone's wallet. Like mm. I can't change how much money you have in right. your pocket, but I can negotiate with your feelings all day long. I can cool. make you I can make you love something. I can turn a want right into a need so you need to have it. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very manipulative, but hard nonetheless. Yeah, it's sales, yeah. right? It's the same thing. Like I've been sold shoes that I don't want multiple times. Like I've been sold stuff that I don't need and I walk out of this mall or the store and I'm like, damn, I went in there for a toothbrush. Yeah. Like why do I, why do I have all this face cream and suntan lotion and like hydrocortisone cream? The pharmacist sold me hard. Right. Right. And I was Absolutely. like, damn, I, I think I need this stuff now. Now, how, how hard is it to, to close on a deal with a mortgage? I see a lot of people when I watch the show, a lot of them is cash deals. I got yeah. cash deals, 15 days, 30 days cash yeah. deals. But a lot of people need mortgages. Is it yeah. very difficult for somebody who has to close with a mortgage? No, no, not at all. And honestly, most of our deals have loans, even the wealthiest people, because interest rates are really low. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like right now, if you're listening to this, I mean, interest rates are really low. You can get a great loan with lots of different banks, and everybody appreciates people who are trying to get mortgages. I actually have a seller right now who's like refusing to do a deal with a buyer we have that's all cash because he just thinks it's weird that someone <laughs> wouldn't get a loan right now because mm-hmm. interest rates are so good. Like, why wouldn't you borrow money if you can? I mean, that's mm-hmm. 
that's the American dream right there. Right. What's really helpful is when you go in and you're already pre-approved, so yeah. your realtor knows what you're approved for, so they can say, okay, you yeah. can't afford this because if you want to get something quickly, at least they know, well, this deal can get done because they're yeah. already pre-approved. Yeah, the biggest mistake a lot of people make when trying to buy something is they go shopping first, mm -hmm. right? Like they go out and see all the homes, they fall in love with something, then they realize they can't afford it, and it's just right. a big waste of everybody's time. Like you want to get pre-approved for that loan early on, figure out how much you have in your wallet. That's something right? Sarah taught me when yeah, I was yeah. looking. The first thing she did was make me get pre-approved. I had no idea what I could afford. Yeah. So I was looking at homes that were a lot less than what I thought I could do. Oh, and nice. then when I got pre-approved, I was like, oh, I really can afford something that is what I want more right. along the lines of what I want because I really wanted a brownstone. Yeah. And I was looking at houses that weren't brownstones yeah. and it was a better investment for me to get that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. I mean, that's what people should do. Good thing Sarah works with me. <laughs> She's smart. <laughs> that's you know, a real you know, um, our, uh, they say the economy <clears throat> is going to yeah. hit another recession soon. Yeah. So what advice would you give, like, potential homeowners and investors to take advantage of, of that? And is that true? Uh, listen, I mean, I can't predict the future. The, the market right now is pretty tough, you know, in New York mm -hmm. and in the rest of the country. But it's, it's tough in the sense that it's pro-buyer. Like, it's a buyer's market. Right. We're doing, like, we did a $40 million deal the other day uh, and did it for 29 like that's twenty twenty nine million dollars is still a lot of money, mm -hmm. but that's eleven million dollars off the asking price. So like, listen, like asking prices, I don't really believe in, you know, unless it's really really cheap and you know it's a good asking price. But I, I don't necessarily think that a recession is coming. Like if it was coming, it might have already happened. Like people thought the market was going to crash last year. No, so the stock saying, market in December was insane, and then nothing happened. They're saying by this summer, if not this summer, definitely summer of 2020. Yeah, maybe. They I, said I, that I last think. Year too. I think. Yeah, they say, they say it all the time. Like the, it's all clickbait, right? Like media, especially online now with Apple News and everyone addicted to just news updates. Like no one clicks on things that make them happy. Like you don't click on an article that says everything's great, go spend money. Like you don't want to see that. You want to click on an article that because misery loves company, <laughs> um, and so that kind of like fuels that fire. But I think that if anything, the presidential election is going to slow things down, just like it did in 2016. That presidential election was so insane, so crazy, and for us anyway, for real estate, like everything got kind of slow mm -hmm. for a little bit because everyone was just like, oh man, what's going to happen? And people were calling for a recession then, and then it didn't happen. How do you decide how much you're going to invest in each property? Because I know you know a lot of the money that people people don't know that. When you're selling a property, you have to pay for the ads and pay for it to go on Realtor.com yeah. and pay for the internet ads. And maybe how do much, some staging. Maybe do some staging. How yeah. much do you decide how much you're going <laughs> to invest in each property? Um, you know, my team and I, we, we spend a lot. We probably spend too much, actually. You know, you want to not think about it as a total dollar amount. Mm -hmm. You want to go in there with a marketing plan. If you're a broker, right? That's what you're asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're a real estate agent, you want to go in there with a marketing plan and know to get this sold, I have to do X, Y, and Z. And here's what X, Y, and Z costs. If it costs a lot, it costs a lot. If it costs a little, it costs a little. Like, I'm, I'm not going to take out a full page ad in the New York Times for like a $1 million apartment, because you don't need to. Right. So that's money I don't have to spend. But for something really big and crazy, where the seller expects it from me, then sure, I've got to spend that kind of so money. If you're selling a home, let's say I'm selling a home with you, and yeah. the deal is up in six months, and yeah. you don't sell a home. Yeah. I shouldn't stay with you, because you're not going to put more money back into it. I might as well go to another company, because they'll invest yeah. more into promotion. Is that <laughs> correct when you're selling a home, for people um, out there selling homes? It kind of. you know. It, it, honestly, it depends. Mm -hmm. you know, it all depends on the individual realtor. It's like most realtors don't want to spend money because it's cash out of your pocket. And what if you don't sell it? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, if we don't sell something, it's not our fault. It's not like we had a buyer who made an offer and we said no. Right. It's either the seller wants too much money or the market sucks. Mm -hmm. Right. And prices have changed. Like right now, you know, we're doing deals where most people are losing money. Right. You know, if you bought in the last six years, you might lose money right now if you want to sell. But maybe there's a good reason that you need to sell. And that's not true for every area. Mm -hmm. um, but like I, with when it comes to listings and working with sellers, like my number one job is to get it sold. And number two is just not to get fired. How important is social media for Super what important. you do? It's changed everything. We just sold a, a house. The listing price was $15 million in Chelsea. Mm -hmm. um, and the buyer came through YouTube. <laughs> I did a property video for it on YouTube, like mm -hmm. this cool thing. It's on there right now if you go to my YouTube page. Um, and a buyer was looking on the east side of Manhattan and didn't want to be on the west side, right? Like someone who just wants east side. Mm -hmm. And her daughter uh, follows me on YouTube, saw the video of the house, sent it to her mom and said, this house looks pretty cool. And the mom was like, nah, I don't, I don't want to be on the west side. It's terrible. And the daughter said, but it looks really, really cool. It's exactly what you're looking for. And what you're looking for, you can't find. And they came through and they bought it for $13 million. Wow. Right through YouTube, and that happens on four hundred thousand dollar homes, and it happens obviously on really really big ones. But people find information now so much 
through YouTube, through Instagram, through Facebook, because it's what they're on all day long. Mm -hmm. So like I, I have to advertise and market our properties on the platforms that people are actually using, especially where their kids are using it. Has right. the internet helped to hurt you? It's incredible. I mean, it's incredible. super helpful. Like yeah. there's, I, I mean, I don't know anything without the internet, mm -hmm. right? Um, I love looking at homes on Instagram. Yeah. Even though I'm not like trying to buy a house, I'll yeah. look and like slide through. I just, that's for me. And then I have all the apps like Trulia yeah, yeah. and Zillow and all of those things that actually send me things in, in the neighborhoods that I'm looking at yeah. just so I can see what things are selling for, what people are asking for. Yeah. It's really helpful. What yeah. about you, Ryan? Um, I think, listen, the internet has been super helpful for us. I mean, it's the way we do consistent deal flow, right? It's I wouldn't be able to sell nearly as much as we do without the internet. Like, what would I do? Pick up the phone? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd have to have, like, file cabinets. <laughs> That's why there are brokerage companies everywhere, because if you wanted to buy or something on that corner, mm -hmm. you'd go to the brokerage company that's on that right corner, there. right? Instead of going to me, and I don't even have to be on that corner anymore, but I have the access to all the information you could ever need. And so that's that's how the internet has been super helpful and social media on top of it. And it just gets better and better and better. Is it more competitive going to a company that's well known, like a Nest Seekers, yeah. because they also are showing that same property to so many different people yeah. so that it's like there's too many bids going on? Honestly, no. Mm -hmm. I, it's all about the individual agent you work with. It's kind of the same thing. Like it's all about that individual doctor and the individual lawyer and like that individual person. You know, I, when I, Nest Seekers, when I started there, it's like, eight people or something you know and there's huge brokerages out there and that's still something people come at me with they're like how come you don't work for one of those massive brokerages i'm mm -hmm. like dude because the massive brokerage isn't going to show your apartment at 10 p.m to eight kids right i'm going to be the one who's there right. so you need to work with the one individual that's going to do that work for you and going to protect you and it's going to be there at midnight when you're upset about the sale or the purchase the brokerage firm's not going to be there you ever look at the the la show or, or other people doing realty yeah. and be like that guy's an asshole <laughs> or that the way that guy <laughs> all talks the time to them, they, they seem like they talk to each other crazy it could be just yeah. for tv especially too. la la seems like they talk to each other crazy yeah things are crazy in la man like they <laughs> it's like it's just the energy's different the environment's different i think new york because most of our clients are you know they work in finance mm -hmm. like it's just it's it's a bit crazier here in terms of the types of buyers mm -hmm. like we're we're a little more buttoned up. Like I wear a suit and tie, not because I love the way it feels on my skin. Mm. Like I wear a suit and tie for my clients. Right. Like I don't do it for myself, right? I do it so I show respect to the people that I'm with. Like I work for them. Like I, I'm a real estate agent, man. Like I, I don't get paid a salary. I don't get benefits. Like I'm a glorified waiter. Mm. And so I need to look need good tip. for my clients. Exactly, <laughs> right? I need yeah. to look good for the clients. If I dressed up the way I want to all day long, I clients, I, and it is what it is, they wouldn't respect me as much. They'd right. say, oh, you didn't, dress up nice for me this morning, you know? And, and unfortunately, because I work in a client Ooh. service business, Respect like that's just the way it is. Politics. Yeah. But it's good. I mean, it's, it's important. Yeah, it's important. Right? I don't, I don't have to, mm -hmm. but then I wouldn't sell nearly as much, and I honestly believe that. How many people come because they just want to meet you personally? So let's just say they're yeah. looking for a home, but they're like, I need Ryan. I need Ryan to show me that to house. To show me my, yeah. yeah. A lot. Um, and I have a team who can really, really help me with a lot of the work, but I, I want to work with as many people as possible. Like, it's pretty crazy. People reach out to me every day to list something or to buy something, and they don't think I'm ever going to respond, and I respond in like five minutes. And they're like, oh my gosh, you, you responded to me. That's mm -hmm. insane. Well, you'll work with me? I'm like, absolutely, let's do it. I, but see you guys I try to vet people. I vet people as yeah, best you, you can. Yeah, you have to. I yeah. see you're on track to do a billion dollars this year already. Uh, That's yes. how you're tracking. Yeah, we've done, um, in the first three months of this year, I've sold just over $260 million. Does the IRS wow. know that? So, uh, yeah, I mean, they will, yeah. unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, for people that's trying to be an agent, what would you suggest? Because I, I was taking my daughter, I was telling them, I took my daughter to uh, a little college tour. Yeah. And most colleges, they don't have classes on real estate. Right. They yeah, don't no, have anything. So how would somebody who wants to get into business, how could they possibly learn? Dude, most colleges don't have classes on how to make money. Like, that's... Like I was a, I was an English literature and theater double major I was at an a liberal major. arts school. Yeah, <laughs> like I I know how to speak English now and I yeah. can write it. <laughs> really good at it. You know, so, to read and yeah, act exactly. And graduate. Yeah, but it's like there's no there's no business right, and so right. even even business school doesn't teach you how to make money. It teaches you how to think, and so I think that's important. Mm -hmm. um, but you want to get your real estate license, you know, and you click or you go to you know the real estate institute or the school, and then you want to join a team. Like I tell everybody that. Like I actually made the mistake. I got super lucky, mm -hmm. obviously, 
But I sat there at a computer by myself posting ads on Craigslist when I started. And that's where most people then don't know what to do because there's there's no boss in real estate. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no one hounding you or telling you what to do or saying you got to go meet this many people. Um, but if you're on a team, then you can learn, right? You can gotcha. listen. You might make less money, but you got to treat the first three years in any business, not mm-hmm. just real estate. Those first three years are grad school. Like even if you're not going to grad school, but you're getting into some business, those first three years, be prepared to like not make money. Be prepared to just get by, but soak up as much information as you can. Like really, really, really learn, do all the grunt work. And then three years in one day, you'll be so far ahead of everybody else who just did it for the money that you'll be that much more successful. Where did you perfect your negotiating skills? Um, I, I like, dude, just trial and error, you know, just trial and error and then writing things down. Like in my notes app on my phone and notebook, like anytime I would negotiate and it would work, I'd write down how I did it um, and then go back to it because people negotiate the same way all the time, yeah. you know? And then I wrote a whole book about it yep. called Sell Like Sir Hand. That's all literally just sell how like to what? sell, sell like it like Sir Hand. Sir Hand. That's my last name. Oh, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just all about how to sell and how to negotiate. Now let's um, talk about the new spinoff too. It's called Sell Like Sir Hand. Yeah, yeah. Now what is the, now? How is this? Is this just you selling homes, or what is it based on your family? You just had a daughter, so what oh is yeah, it no, based no, no. On? <laughs> uh, it's a show on Bravo um, that is about how to sell anything. So it's not real estate. It's oh. literally people who have watched Million Dollar Listing for the last eight years who sell hot tubs and tires and golf apparel who reach out to me because they're about to get fired and they want to be able to sell more so they can hit their quotas and not lose their job. And so I go in and I help them sell more. Um, and it was really, really hard. Mm-hmm. And uh, But it was funny. It's funny. I think it's, you know, the first season just came out and now it's on iTunes and everywhere else. What's the craziest thing you had to help somebody sell? Oh, man. Uh, what's the craziest thing? <laughs> Honestly, dude, probably probably hot tubs. <laughs> like <laughs> Selling a hot tub is, is hard. Like that's, that's a niche it's, audience. It's a, yeah, it's a niche audience, but it's also like purely a luxury item. Yeah. Right. Like you don't need a hot tub. Does that add value to a home? Yeah, a little bit, but like not much, you know? Right. You, so you try to sell it with, you know, a lot of different reasons. Like it's good for health benefits, you know? It's it's fun at night. Like it's good for kids. If you have kids, you don't have a pool, but you have a hot tub, you know, kind of empty the water out halfway and keep it cold and they can use it as a little <laughs> swimming pool. Oh my gosh. It was, it was tough. Selling hot tubs is tough. I had to get in the pools. I was like in a Speedo. It was so weird. <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> That's you know, what you say really about yeah. Solomon? He's an asshole. Really? Back to your negotiating skills, right? Like, yeah. do you take no for an answer? Uh, not really. I mean, you know, it's people say no all the time because they, they don't like committing to things. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why people say no, because it's easier. It's easier to say no. But I'll ask a question a thousand times in different ways. How'd that and work for you when you was younger trying to get late? Yeah, it didn't really. Um, it took me a while. <laughs> You know, but uh, I, I don't know if I would use it there. I think if a girl says no, you, you should take go. that. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> just te- I think, just yeah. testing you out. That's yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks <laughs> for that. Question, see, yeah, no, yeah. See, see, see if you're going to fall for that one. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I did for a second. I was like, wait a minute. What is this question? What is this question? <laughs> yeah. But in sales, if someone says no, they don't want to buy that, it means they do want to buy it. They just want somewhat of a better deal. Or they want you to pay attention to them more. Like everyone's got their mm-hmm. reasons. Is there ever a time when you would say it's not a good idea for someone to buy something like, for instance... Yeah, if you can't fin- afford it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, even financially, because a lot of times people feel like, I have to buy property, oh, yeah. I have to invest in real estate, estate. No. but for some people, it really isn't the best idea. Yeah, no, no, no. I, have, I don't think... You, you shouldn't buy a home if it's going to make you financially stressed. Like, there's there's tons of things to rent. You know, save up your money. Save up until you have a comfortable enough down payment Mm -hmm. where when you buy, you're not going to be stressed about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Or if you do have some money saved up, like just do the math and figure out, is it cheaper for you to rent or to own? And a lot of times it's actually less expensive for you to own. And then you can just build up equity. The problem with rent is a lot of people say, I don't want to buy. It scares me. I don't have the money. But then they rent something for 10 years. And they should have just bought. They could have bought right? it by then. Right. They should have just bought by then. At least it, hold it. Like, do some improvements. Five years later, redo your kitchen. You'll spend, I don't know, $25,000 on some new kitchen cabinets. But now the house will be worth $50,000 more mm-hmm. versus just burning money on rent just because you're indecisive and nervous. But if you can't afford it, you don't have the income for it. If you don't have money saved up. Like, don't stress. Don't. It's not. You don't need to own a home. You know, like rent and, and put your money elsewhere. Like, invest into your business, whatever your business might be. Um, or just don't stress. Like everything's gonna be okay. And do you do a lot of off market deals? I know sometimes you say this hasn't hit the the, the you know MLS net. Yeah. Yet, and I got this. Do you do a lot of those? Um, I, I try. It's hard. Mm-hmm. I don't really like doing it because if something's off market, it means that someone's not motivated. 
You know, like the seller is not going to put it on the market because they're just not real sellers. Gotcha. Like they want a price that is just unrealistic. And so every time we do something off market, unless it's going to come on the market in six months or something and it's just bad timing, mm-hmm. for the most part, off market people really are just telling the world that they just don't really want to sell. Gotcha. You know, how's it being a new father? Crazy man. You just had a daughter. How old is your daughter? Yeah, she is five weeks today. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's what he was wow. Yeah, her name is Zena, and she's uh, my beautiful little Greek princess. Um, and she is a warrior, and she's very, very cute and very mm-hmm. crazy. She's sleeping a little bit now, mm-hmm. which is awesome. Mm-hmm. But my wife is a champ, and she's at home with her right now, probably listening to this to make sure I don't say anything stupid. Did mm-hmm. you go to your wife? Hey, you're about to have a baby, so you know we need. Uh, you're gonna need a bigger place. Yeah, so kind of. Gonna... Actually, actually, <laughs> I did. We bought one of. We bought a brownstone in Brooklyn. Uh, one of my own listings because like, oh, oh wow. man, we're gonna have a baby. I need more space. I didn't really need more space. I seen that episode. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I wanted. Um, but I just I got freaked out like. My version of nesting was mm. I need more space, so I gotta I gotta get everything ready, and I need to work that much more because I gotta mm. protect. And I saw I had this little girl, and I immediately was like, I gotta go to the gym. Yeah, I gotta work on I'll this. Buy a new gun. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. like um, <laughs> you know, like what is it, Bad Boys Two? Mm-hmm. Right. I need that scene. That scene's gonna happen in my house, mm-hmm. right? Where the where the boyfriends come over. Like, no way, no way, man. Has Don't- it changed the way you even like work though? Um, in a sense, you know. Uh, Work is like it's in my blood. Like it's what I love doing. But I I want to be home more. That's for sure. Yeah. Right for her because I don't want to miss things. Mm-hmm. But it's amazing what you can do now with like FaceTime. You know, I, like I I talk to her all day every day. Mm-hmm. But I try to get home more. I try to you know not work so much on the weekends just because I want her to like know that I'm there right. and hear my voice and try to be you know the best father I possibly can be. I don't want to be one of those dads who just like worked himself to death and wasn't there for their kids. Like mm-hmm. that'll destroy me. Now, I was going to ask, you know, with all the listings that you have, I know sometimes, you know, you get great deals. Do you ever yeah. invest into those deals and say, you know what, this We're one I'm going to take this. or this one I'm going to keep? Yeah. I, but the to the apartment that I currently live in in Soho was an example of that. It was mm-hmm. like, man, this is too good of a deal. I need to jump on this, even when I couldn't afford it. Like when I bought that apartment that I live in now, I couldn't I couldn't afford it. Mm-hmm. I had to figure out how to make it work, but I knew it was a good deal. Same thing with the townhouse in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. But then I also do a lot of new development sales. So all those big buildings you see, new condos, we sell those. Mm-hmm. And I'll try to take like a small apartment in one that I think is a good deal and just hold on to it. You know, just rent it. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, John Jacob Astor, right, from Astor Place, mm-hmm. said like 200 years ago, uh, if I knew then what I know now, I would buy up every single inch of real estate in New York. Mm-hmm. And that was true then. And it's true now pricing is just relative like things seem expensive today but they won't be expensive in 10 years yeah. and it's just the way that it works right on anything on anything well we appreciate you for joining us and stopping by thanks chatting. guys thanks for having me now when does the show come on when can people see it um, uh, sell like Sirhan I don't have the air date million dollar listing comes Ooh, back sometimes this sometimes this uh, <laughs> million dollar listing comes back season 8 sometime this summer um, I do a vlog on YouTube that is that I love doing and that comes out new episode every Wednesday night you can follow me on social at Ryan Sirhan everywhere and if you want to sell or buy something email me Ryan at RyanSirhan.com plug for my business what's up there you go it's Ryan Sirhan it's the Breakfast Club good morning